Welcome to today's masterclass. My name is Henry Dewar. I'm part of the beverage innovation team here at Monin, and I find myself here at the Monin Beverage Innovation Studio in the heart of central London. Today, I am joined by the lovely Kenji Jesse, and we're going to be talking about the difference between bartending at home and bartending in a bar scenario. I have worked in Monin for about two and a half years. I've been part of the beverage innovation team where I help to develop drinks and different menus and concepts for a variety of different applications and different concepts. Uh, hey to everyone that's watching, I'm Kenji. I'm a consultant in the, the global alcohol industry. Uh, I'm obviously going to be making drinks from my kitchen. I've been in this industry for around 20 years, uh, consulting to, to different brands all over the world. Um, but it's very exciting uh, to be able to explore different avenues even in, in times like this. So uh, great to be a part of it. Thank you for joining me today, Kenji. Um, obviously, as I said earlier, we're going to be talking about a couple of things today, a couple of main topics. Um, one of them is going to be ice, and the other is going to be tools and equipment. Just fundamentally highlighting the difference between what you might have at home, in a home scenario, and what you might find in a normal bar scenario. But obviously highlighting that you can make brilliant and delicious drinks in both settings, and neither impede on one another. All right? So, I mean, why don't we kick off today and start talking about, you know, this wonderful topic of ice and the, actually how important it is to make high-end drinks. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll start off today with a question for you. Do you know when ice was first used in iced beverages? Ice used in iced beverages. Eskimos? Nearly, it was actually uh, two brothers called the Tudor Brothers in 1805 in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, they had no background in the beverage industry, but they, suddenly, they obviously realized that ice was incredibly cold, incredibly prevalent in that part of the States, and they had a light bulb moment and decided to start doing uh, ice for beverages. Within 30 years, they were shipping over 12,000 tons of ice halfway around the world. One of their biggest markets was actually in India. Uh, obviously, with the start of the uh, British colonialization of the, of the world, they obviously loved uh, ice beverages in a very hot setting. So that was one of their biggest markets that I find amazing. It sort of blew me away. And obviously from there, from there, I mean, obviously. Uh, How did they get the ice to India? They shipped it. Okay. In massive well, they blocks. They behind like a. Exactly. Like a yeah, massive iceberg. blocks. So obviously this comes onto the point of more ice melts slowly, right? So there's big surface area, slower, uh, slower melt time. Because obviously in a drink, you want as much ice as possible, right? Because what this allows, it has more surface area, so it brings the temperature of the liquid down to a lower point quicker, okay? I mean, obviously, that's something not, not many people know. Most people either complain or wonder why there's so much ice in their drinks, as though they're being cheated for liquid and alcohol. But actually, more ice is better. It keeps your drink, your drink stronger for longer. So, And obviously, in a bar setting, you're going to have two main types of ice, right? You're going to have cubed ice, and you're going to have crushed ice. Okay, so obviously you're not going to have those generally in a home setting. So I tell you what, today I'm going to make a drink for you that incorporates both of those ice types. All right. So we're going to obviously with summer still here, hanging on as best it can. I'm going to make a little summery twist on one of my favourite cocktails, which is a margarita. So I'm actually going to do a spicy mango margarita. Okay. So we're going to take our lovely rocks glass today, and we're going to fill it up with crushed ice. It will just help to chill that glass down. We're just going to top that with a little bit of still water. Just help to chill that glass down and just pop that to one side, okay? And we're going to take our cocktail shaker and obviously margarita, as you well know, I'm sure you've drunk one or two in your time. Um, really, really easy. Um, it's just traditionally uh, lime juice, ideally fresh lime juice, tequila and triple sec. So we're going to do a little twist on this, as I say. We're going to take Monin's delicious spicy mango syrup. I'm sure you might have had this before. Wonderful. So you get the real sweetness from those really pungent mangoes, and then you get a lovely little chili kicks from the Szechuan uh, chili peppers that they put in it. So we need 15 ml. What drink are you making, Henry? We're going to make a spicy mango margarita, Kenji. Mm. Nice. 15 ml of our spicy mango syrup. We're going to take 20 ml of fresh lime juice. 
I'm going to be using a Mexican elbow today. You might, you might have seen one of these before. You might have even have one at home. If you don't, then just as easy, and just squeeze it by hand into the glass, okay? So, 20 mils of fresh lime. We're going to just take a little silver tequila. I'm going to do a nice big slog of this. It's been quite a long week. So I'm going to do 50 mils of tequila. Voila. And then we're going to be using our cube dice, okay? So make sure you fill that shaker as much as possible with cube dice. Obviously helps to just bring that core temperature of the liquid down to as low a point as possible. I always like to put a little bit of extra cube dice just on the other side of my tin. And we're just going to put two tins on top of each other, squeeze them together and just give that a really good hard shake, but not too long, just to really dilute it and just bring the core temperature down, okay? Hopefully it's going to be delicious. Perfect. I'm going to give it a little taste, just make sure it's nice and balanced and cold enough. Delicious. That's like summer in a glass. They just discard the crushed ice and water, obviously you don't need that anymore. And as you can see, obviously you've got a nice chill glass effect, um, obviously a bit of condensation running down, that's exactly what you're looking for. Take our strainer. Drain that straight into our rocks glass. And then we're just going to fill it up with some cube dice. I like my margaritas on the rocks. I like a little bit of extra dilution as I drink my drink. And then just a really simple garnish. A couple of just fresh lime slices. Pop them in the glass like so. There you are. One delicious spicy mango margarita. Obviously using a bit more, maybe a little bit more um, ice types than you might have at home, for instance. Maybe, but I mean, it's just such a simple, delicious drink. So, there you are. Nice. Did I get that? I did. I liked it. Thanks, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, for those who are at home uh, and can't go out and want to have a, a drink at home, you're not going to have lots of crushed ice and so much uh, cubed ice available. So there are lots of interesting ways of getting your, your drink cold uh, at home without having to have uh, kilograms of ice. Uh, one of the easiest ways is to, to get an ice mold. Uh, there are lots of simple, cheap ice molds that you can stick in your freezer. Uh, random fact for you that I found out a few years ago that a lot of bars don't have freezers. Um, which, which I found very interesting. I was like, why don't you have a freezer? And they're like, well, we don't really need a freezer. We've obviously got an ice machine and everything else is, is, is cold in the fridge. I think a lot of high-end bars now have freezers and, and, and freezing, but still, uh, obviously, most people at home will have a freezer to, to make big block ice uh, without the need for, for lots of different ice. I mean, I know we were on a, a short call here, but I could talk for hours about ice. It's one of my, my favorite topics. Um, and if, if I may, I'll tell you a little story um, uh, about ice. I mean, when I first started, I was running a program called ESP, Every Serve Perfect. And at the heart of it was uh, ice. Because as you know, uh, as you made your drink there, the colder the drink, the, the more refreshing it's going to taste. Like getting a can out of the fridge rather than at room temperature. So just having lots of ice in the glass, I, for about three years, it's all we, t we went around the country teaching uh, publicans and, and bartenders about the, the importance of ice. This is before uh, social media uh, was around and we were, we were just talking about ice for, for hours basically. Um, but then my first real uh, mind-blown element about ice is when I took my first business trip to Japan. I'm half Japanese and my, my company name is Nomu which means drink in, in Japanese but I've never really been there for work. Uh, in the drink industry, and I was taken taken out in Tokyo. Went to this little bar under it was, a, it was an unassuming bar, and it was under the railway arches. 
Uh, we went there and asked for a drink. I can't actually remember what the drink was, but the bartender um, started to make the drink. And then uh, he got a, a big ice block out of his freezer and started hand carving it. Now hand carved ice is more au fait now uh, in bars, but this is the first time I'd have ever seen hand carved ice. And it took him about a minute to, to cut this uh, ice ball. And he didn't even test it. He got his glass out and it just, he just dropped it in. And it was millimeter perfect, just dropped into the glass. And he poured his drink over the top and the ice ball kind of slowly rotated. It was, I was crying. I was literally crying at the bar seeing such a sexy piece of ice. Can I call ice sexy? I don't know, but this ice was sexy. Just the way uh, that he meticulously crafted it. And then he, 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 uh, he apologized to me. It was like, uh, I'm really sorry, I'm just a, a junior bartender. And that, uh, there was a second mind blown situation. I was like, what do you mean you're a junior bartender? How long have you been bartending? It was like uh, five and a half years. Now, coming from London, if you've been bartending in five and a half years, you're a master mixologist and you're setting up your own consultancy or con putting a menu for another the bar. But obviously in Japan, there's this history of lifetime employment. So if you're gonna do something, do it really well uh, and engage uh, and really focus on that one aspect. So this guy's dedication to, uh, before he was even allowed to make the drink, he had to work for two years as the bar back, polishing the glasses, learning the rules of the bar. He spent another two years learning the skill of crafting ice and just the different types of ice. It was just mind blowing. Um, and then this, the second trip, if I may uh, talk about when I went to Japan, uh, you know, Ueno-san from High Five Bar. Um, and he took me behind his bar and he showed me his ice well. Uh, and there was three, he had three temperatures of ice. He said, this ice is at minus five, this ice is at minus 10, and this ice is at minus 20. And I was like, well, why do you need three types of ice at different temperatures? Um, and he was like, well, if I'm making a martini and I store my gin in the fridge, and he brought out his, his uh, gin, and it's at minus 15, if I use the minus five ice or the minus 10 ice, I'm gonna be warming the gin up in the, the martini. Uh, so I need to use the minus 20 ice for the minus 15 gin. I was just like, you know, this was, this, this was mind blowing. So at that point I realized how important ice was. So um, I like to make a, a drink here. So I'm gonna make a, an old fashioned. Um, if you look at Difford's guide, I think the old fashioned has been the number one search cocktail on, on Difford's for like five years running. It's the number one cocktail on the world's 50 best uh, cocktail analysis uh, ever since it began, I believe. I think it's just a, a, a really popular drink, especially for people at home when it's very simple. So um, I've got my glass. I'm gonna, um, I think something, uh, another benefit of making drinks at home is that you don't need 20 of one type of glass. So something you can have when people come round, uh, everyone gets their own glass when you come to my house, um, whether it's a tiki mug or a Moscow mule mug, something a little bit different, a little bit quirky. I like to give mugs that, or glasses that represent the people, uh, Star Wars gl glass um, and coasters as well. I got a really nice coaster uh, and a unique glass. I'm just gonna get my ice molds. I might be a little sad here, but I, I have about 20 different ice molds. Uh, so I'm just going to show you the most basic, which is a two inch square uh, ice mold. Obviously the larger the ice, the slower the dilution. And you just, um, there's lots of different ways. I've actually got a few different ice molds here. I, I got out to show you. Um, this is a, you can also use cookie molds or anything that you have in, in your kitchen that you can find. Uh, this makes roses. I think it's designed, it's a jelly mold, I believe. Uh, I saw this first in Israel uh, where Ariel had a, a big rose ice block on the top of his drink. I was like, all right, eBay, uh, yeah. rose uh, thing. So I'm a bit of a Star Wars geek, so there's my uh, X-Wing fighter. Um, but you can have a bit of fun with, with ice. So I've just got one big ice block uh, nothing, nothing fancy in my glass. I'm gonna make my old fashioned. Um, I like to keep most of my drinks, especially at home, to three ingredients. Keep it nice and simple. So I'm gonna use uh, Johnny Walker Green Label. I've worked with Diageo quite a lot over the years. Um, so it's a, a blended malt. So you get a lot of the, the 
complexity of the single malts, but obviously the, uh, the integrity of, of, of the blend. I'm going to use Paragon Rueberry. I've been working with Paragon since January this year and I, I love it. It's, um, for those who haven't seen it, it's a new luxury cordial. Um, so it's got the sweetness and sour, but um, it's, it's quite unique. The sweetness uh, from the Monin Magic, but the sour from Gluconic Acid. Uh, which is, I think, unique in the in the drinks industry, uh, and bitters, and that's it. Just going to mix those two together. I did a video before where I used the Kappa, I used Monin's uh, white chocolate syrup uh, and orange bitters. Uh, so there's lots of different ways you can twist. Say that drink looks delicious. Yeah. Say that again. Say that again. That that drink looked absolutely delicious. The white chocolate to Kappa, amazing. Yes, uh, obviously rum. Um, and chocolate, <laughs> it just goes well together. Uh, so I'm going to use the, the scotch, so I'm pouring, I'm not going to use a jigger or anything like that, I'm at home, I'm making it for myself. So, nice measure, Tony Walker Green Label. I'm going to use just under half part of the, the Paragon, the Rueberry, which is um, a pepper from Ethiopia, the flavour getting in there, just pouring that nice over there. And then a few drops of my Angostura. Now I'm just going to use, I am going to use a bar spoon, it's the only uh, piece of equipment I am going to use today. Um, just, it's my favourite bar tool, just going to stir that over my ice. Obviously the garnish uh, is generally an orange if you've got it, or you can switch for the orange bitters, but fresh orange will give you the zest over the top, so if you can hold it, hear the drink, nice, fresh orange. I'm just using a potato peeler. In there. So yes, ice is incredibly important to uh, a drink. And in a bar, as you showed, crushed ice, cubed ice, you can bash out the drinks all, all night. Uh, but if you're at home, just concentrate on high quality, large blocks, keep the drinks nice and cold. Uh, and there's my old fashioned, just one block. So cheers, mate. Cheers, buddy. Looks delicious. Chin chin. Mm. Mm. That, 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 that really works. works. You get the, the smokiness of the, the scotch. You get the unique sweetness uh, from the paragon. Mm. Obviously the, the oomph from the bitters. You get that, that fresh, fresh orange zest. zest. Mm. Um, Big block of ice, it's still there. Ice it's gonna last gonna about an hour, hour, I reckon. It looks uh, amazing. I mean, yeah, actually, you, I, I was gonna touch on that point, obviously, because I, I made my drink before you, and obviously you, were, you, were, you recalled your stories of ice in old fashions to me, but actually, tasting this uh, margarita now, it still tastes absolutely delicious, and how it was intended to be served right at the start, obviously because that glass is full of ice, and it's allowed the flavor and the strength of the tequila to really sit there. So once again, chin chin. So if you were at home, could you make that drink on an ice block? I, you definitely could, yeah. And look, once again, it was only three ingredients, right? So super easy, be perfect on an ice block. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. So bartenders, lots of great ice. Uh, home tenders, lots big blocks. Uh, home tenders, big blocks. Perfect, wonderful, so simple. And so obviously we've touched on uh, different types of ice that will be used in bars compared to at home. And obviously bars generally a little bit more technical or a little bit more equipment. So I think that nicely moves us on to equipment. So obviously I'm just gonna move that out of the way, I'm gonna consume that delicious margarita later. Um, obviously if you go into a bar and you sit at the bar top, you're gonna look down the bar and you're gonna see shakers and strainers and bar spoons and jiggers and I use the Mexican elbow, bar knives, a lot of equipment. And obviously some of it you've definitely seen before. Maybe there are a few bits that have sort of creeped into bars over the last five years, I would say, that are quite groundbreaking. So I'm gonna make a drink this afternoon that is focuses on using something quite different. So this is siphons, okay? okay. Siphons obviously okay. traditionally used in culinary applications, okay? So for this, we're gonna be using two siphons. So you've got two main types, okay? The first it resembles that, I'm sure you've seen before, like those old Victorian style soda water dispensers, you might have seen before. 
And then the second type looks a bit like a whipper. Okay, so obviously these are traditionally used for carbonated beverages. So if you put water in, you can carbonate it yourself. Um, obviously using CO2 gas, which is what I'll be using today. Obviously CO2 gas is mainly used in the likes of colas, tonics, sodas, stuff like that. Okay, and then this one, we're going to be creating a foam. So this is fundamentally the same, but we're going to be using nitrogen gas instead. Okay. So the drink we're going to be making today, I hear you ask, is one of my guilty pleasures and a real favourite. It's called a Miami Vice. So Miami Vices, they are two modern classics sort of combined together. So you've got a strawberry daiquiri and a pina colada, okay? So I know, amazing, mind blown. So traditionally, the, exactly. So traditionally these would be um, blended, so you'd have two blender jugs and you pour them together so they sort of spiral and intertwine. And then when you drink it, you get that delicious creaminess from the pina colada, and you get the lovely lime and strawberry refreshingness from the strawberry daiquiri, okay? But because obviously blenders are quite technical in themselves, I thought I would take this drink and twist it on its head, okay? So we're gonna have a carbonated sparkling strawberry daiquiri, and then we're gonna have a coconut foam, okay? A little bit different. Fundamentally really, really easy. You just need quite particular equipment, okay? So for this, we're gonna be using some scales instead of a jigger this time, just to bring even more technology and equipment into it. I'm gonna take a jug, pop it on the scales. So really, really, really simple. We're going to be using um, four ingredients in the strawberry daiquiri part. First of all, we're gonna be using Monin strawberry puree, okay? So it's one of my favorites, a real go-to of mine within the Monin Ranch. For this, it's going to be 75 mils of strawberry puree, okay? So Henry, mm. over the last few months, you've been my go-to person for random facts, as I've been saying. Uh, can you tell me about strawberries? Of course I can. So in a normal year, obviously when Wimbledon is played down in the lovely southwest of London, over the two-week period, over a ton of strawberries is consumed. Can you believe that? It's unbelievable. Obviously strawberries and cream, sat in the sunshine, watching some tennis. Sounds pretty idyllic, right? So obviously we're gonna incorporate that wonderful strawberry flavor into this drink and see if we can create some memories of Wimbledon gone by. So 75 mils of strawberry puree. We're then gonna be taking uh, 75 mils of lime juice. So we're talking about equipment and obviously you're using uh, foamers in, the, um, in two different ways, but what do you think about the influx of new equipment that have been coming into bars over the last five, ten years from rotobaps and um, centrifuges? Do you know what, I, I have to say, I think it's really exciting. I mean, I think obviously a lot of it is a massive crossover. So obviously, you've, I'm sure you've seen on television the likes of MasterChef, Great British Menu. Obviously, I think that's really instilled and got people, consumers really excited about the food they're consuming. And they'll go to restaurants and they'll know more than they've ever known before. And I think the same will be for drinks as well. And almost a bit like modern day, a lot of modern day bartenders, almost chefs. There's a lot of behind the scenes prep work now that might not have existed 10 years ago. And I think some of the creations that are made now, like the, the likes of clarify rhubarb juice, sparkling rhubarb and custards that you hear. I mean, some of the drinks that are created now are absolutely phenomenal. And obviously, I mean, it's mainly down to these new contraptions. As you say, like centrifuges, rotobabs, it's incredible. I mean, yeah, I think you're just getting another, another level of like drink quality that might not have existed a few years ago. Yeah. I suppose it's how it's, it's, it's how one way that bars can, can differentiate, bars differentiate from, from what people from can make at home. Make at home. Very true, very true. I mean, obviously, a right of that might set you back four or five thousand pounds. I don't think an average consumer is going to purchase one of those to be making some clarified pina colada juice or uh, passion fruit juice for a Saturday night tipple, really. But I mean, obviously, I think then that gives you another reason to then go to these bars and go to these venues and have and be able to consume something that you won't necessarily be able to get at home. So it yeah. leaves a bit of excitement out there, doesn't it? I mean, I love to be able to go to restaurants and bars still and have something that whether I can't create because I don't have the equipment or maybe the knowledge or 
maybe the inkling to be honest because you still go to a restaurant and you have a beautiful plate of food and it's just such a contentment at the end of it it's pure excitement for me when i get to go to these venues and think i was really treated that was absolutely delicious so yeah so just to recap you've got 75 mils of strawberry puree 75 mils of lime juice we're going to be putting 75 mils of white rum obviously the daiquiri is a nice classic cocktail it's only traditionally three ingredients, so rum, lime, sugar. So obviously this is a little bit of a fruity twist. You're telling me that the, uh, the purees are 50% fruit, 50% sugar? They are indeed, yeah. This just gives you, um, one, you don't need to add any additional syrup or sweetening elements. And also gives it quite a long shelf life. So these have a four week shelf life at Ambient as well, which is great for home Very consumption, because cool. then you don't have to worry about trying to cram it in your fridge or keep it in a cool place. You could keep it on your sideboard next to your oils or your bottle of red wine, and it's perfect. And really, really versatile as well. So yeah, they're really close to the real texture of fruits. Obviously, I mean, I've got the strawberry one here, and you've got the strawberry pips in it. So when you're drinking, whether it be a strawberry lemonade or a strawberry daiquiri, you're gonna get the strawberry seeds. So it's almost like you're biting into a strawberry or Wimbledon, right? So. So obviously, with putting the ingredients in a siphon, there's not gonna be any ice. So obviously you need to make up for the dilution. So I'm just gonna be using some still water, okay? So it's gonna be 75 mils of that. Give that a little stir. And then just pour that straight into your siphon. bit of effervescence on your palate it just sort of lifts it um, yeah it just makes it a little bit lighter than what it might be if you normally shook a drink or just stirred it down for instance it's just a little bit different it's a talking point I think definitely so just screw that together I'm just gonna take one co2 canister like so we're just gonna charge that. Do a little hiss, just give it a little roll around just to make sure that it's nicely carbonated. And then we're just gonna stir the top off. And then, spread into a little tasting glass for you. So you're gonna see, you know, hopefully you can see on the camera there. So you've got the effervescence, the bubbles rising, a little bit of light, light foam. I'm just gonna pop that in the fridge just for it to chill down while we make the second part to our drink. And obviously, no Miami Vice is complete without the pina colada aspect, okay? This is a little bit different. So in this, we're gonna take one more jug. This is a three ingredient foam. So obviously you might have seen uh, the likes of chefs making creams and foams throughout the years using mainly animal-based products, whether it be obviously cream from cows or egg white, obviously uh, animal-based. Um, so I'm gonna be using making a vegan foam, okay? So the way we go about this is as follows. I'm gonna take our delicious Monin coconut syrup, okay? We're gonna be pouring 150 mils of this. I do indeed, a wonderful fact about coconuts. Random coconut Here's one for you, Kenji. So, coconuts have an exceptionally high uh, water content uh, in their makeup, which allows them to float in oceans. So this is the main reason why coconuts grow in so many different parts of the world. Whether they, let's say they originated in the Caribbean, they would have fallen off coconut trees, rolled down the beach into the ocean, floated through the Pacific and come to rest on the shores of Indonesia or Southeast Asia and the seeds would have then planted and coconut trees sprung up. Therefore, this is why they grow in so many different parts of the world. Amazing, right? So 150 mils of coconut syrup, 150 mils of still water. 
or one to one, whichever is easier to remember. And then we're going to be using about three mils of miraculous foamer. So this is fundamentally a bit like aquafaba or chickpea water. Um, chickpeas are a great alternative to egg white to use in the likes of sour bait, sour cocktails, um, or anything where you want to achieve a foam. Uh, the reason for this is when you shake and aerate them or charge it with gas, uh, the protein molecules uh, fluff up and it creates a wonderful foam and it's amazing. And obviously with the increase in vegan diets, pescatarian diets, people want less animal products in their day-to-day -day diets. Um, obviously take a bit more care about what they put into their bodies. This is a great alternative to the likes of egg white. So, three mils of this. About three pipettes. Give that a little stir, just combine. We're going to just pour that straight into our siphon. Seal it up. The only thing you need to make sure with these is, if you've got a little rubber seal inside, make sure you put that in or the gas is going to escape. And you won't really end up with a foam, you'll just end up with a slightly depressing liquid, I'll be honest. But... <laughs> and for this one, we're going to actually double charge it. So we're going to use two canisters. This will just increase the uh, foam's viscosity and make it even thicker and a little bit richer. Okay? You can, I mean, with these siphons, you can use cream, you can use egg white, obviously uh, in culinary based things, great for drinks. Um, but I think the vegan. I think a vegan foam is a really great little talking point as well. And also it cuts out any risk of allergies or cross-contamination, especially within the bar setting. I mean, allergy information and issues has become such a talking point in the media and the industry over the last few years. I think it's better, sometimes better to be safe than sorry. So if you can try and cut out any risks, it's better. Right? Take the top off. Wonderful. Obviously, make sure you give it a good shake just to combine all those ingredients together. Nicely whipped. You'll be able to hopefully see there. Nice, wonderfully light coconut foam. So the Miraculous Foamer doesn't actually impart any flavor on it. You just get pure coconut notes. And it's really, really easy. Just three ingredients, right? So to construct this wonderful little drink, Remove that out of the way. As I say, traditionally this drink would be served blended, so probably long and like a hurricane style glass. I totally flipped it on his head. I'm going to serve it in a very delicate little coupette. Okay? I'm going to take our carbonated strawberry daiquiri. A sentence I didn't think I'd say today, but here we are. <laughs> Fill it about two thirds of the way. You obviously want a nice balance between the slight citrus and acidic notes of the strawberry daiquiri, and the lovely velvety smooth notes of the coconut. Just like that, the Miami Vice. Nice. Well, give it a little taste, any excuse. I have to say it's delicious. So you, coconut foam is really smooth, really velvety, quite rich, chin chin. And the effervescence, the slight bubbles from the strawberry daiquiri just sort of cuts through at the end of the palate. It's, just, it's almost as good as the original, I'll be honest. Very different, a lot lighter, a lot less filling. So who knows, could be a new modern day classic. But obviously that's using quite a lot of different types of equipment, quite specialist equipment as well. So yes. um, yeah. let's see what you have, sir. So obviously great, in a bar, lots of equipment, lots of different techniques that you can use, but at home, you might not want to invest in quite so many tools, you may not have a shaker or those elements. Um, so I'm gonna make a cocktail that uses uh, just one piece of equipment, um, the bar spoon. Same as I, I used uh, for my last drink, that's all I'm going to use. Um, so I'm going to make quite a complex drink as well, but using three ingredients, but the 
flavor is going to bring it out and I'm just going to use, and it's going to have a foam as well but I'm just going to use uh, my bar spoon. Um, a few days ago uh, someone was asking me about Japanese cocktails so I was thinking about how to incorporate Japanese flavors into a cocktail. My favorite drink is the Scorpino. Uh, I believe you know the, the Scorpino, a classic uh, Italian uh, drink using vodka, uh, prosecco and lemon sorbet. I, mean, I had a, quite a few years ago in Italy. It's not really taken off worldwide. Mostly, once again, it's that issue with, with freezers in bars, the freezing the, the sorbet. It's something that's very easy to do at home. So I'm just gonna grab things out of my freezer. Once again, another benefit of... I've got my little frozen glass that I've got here. I've got some... Uh, bottle of Haku Japanese vodka that I've got frozen. Got some uh, yuzu sorbet, which I'll talk about in a second. And some sparkling sake. So, this is a, a take. Uh, so for the vodka, I'm using Haku Japanese vodka using Japanese rice. Uh, for the sorbet, I've taken uh, regular lemon sorbet and add Monin's yuzu uh, puree. Now being Japanese or not, I just love uh, yuzu, but it's very hard and very expensive to get hold of. So uh, when you sent me this, this bottle a few months ago, I'm absolutely in love with it. Just the, the flavors of the, the natural citrus. Can you give me a yuzu fact of the day? You know what, I actually can. So um, yuzus, they weren't uh, traditionally grown. It was actually a natural cross-contamination that happened between a lime and a mandarin. So it would have maybe cross-pollination happened a few thousand years ago and between limes and mandarins, and today we have yuzus. And look, obviously touching on your point, yuzus are one of my favorite citrus, uh, citrus flavors. So aromatic, so rich, super, super sour, but oh, they just make such wonderful drinks. So yeah, I'm excited to see what this will be like. It's rich, it's almost marmalade-y, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it does have that marmalade, but that citrus is quite, it's different, it's tart, but it's flavoursome, it's sweet. Um, it's it's got a real perfumed note, I find. It's really delicate, but really complex, all in the same breath. So, yeah, use it. Really underrated, really underutilised, I find. It's... I think I think it's because it's so hard to get hold of, like fresh yuzu. It's, in this in this country very hard so it's great to be able to get all those flavors and have the stability of it and then to replace the Prosecco I'm using a uh, sparkling sake which I bought online I know you, you're aware of this one but um, not really tried it before and it's really blown my mind how delicate and light and really easy going it is so I'm just gonna add a measure straight into my glass of the, the Japanese vodka so as I said, I mixed uh, lemon sorbet with the yuzu uh, to create yuzu sorbet. Once again, trying to stick to my three ingredient rule. Mix that in. And then just top it up with my sparkling sake. I don't need any ice in this because everything's nice and cold. Obviously the sorbet. Now the reaction of the um, bubbles and the sparkling and the sorbet is going to create that foam for me. So once again, equipment wise, as you can see, the only thing I'm using is my bar spoon. If you don't have a bar spoon, you can use a teaspoon or any long spoon for this particular drink to, to sort out. So you don't actually need any equipment to make this wonderful drink at home. You get that lovely mixture. So we've got my vodka, my yuzu puree from Monin, and we've got my sparkling sake, this is my homemade sorbet. Uh, I've just got a little craft um, element to, to do my um, origami garnish. And there we have my Japanese um, whoop, ropino. Lovely foam, no equipment. Mm. That's, that sparkling sake really lifts it. You get the flavors of the yuzu, the punch of the vodka. 
Ah, that's a winner. So simple to make, easy to do at home, keep everything nice and cold, uh, easy. So equipment wise, yeah, in a bar, great to use all the, the new innovations and new techniques. Um, but if you're at home, uh, then it's, it's a great drink. I mean, if you can go out, I think it's great to support bars and bartenders and hospitality. They really need people to go out and really enjoy drinks out uh, again responsibly. But if you are stuck at home, uh, then it is possible to make really complex flavors, but really simply using minimal elements that you have in your house already. Um, and obviously it's quite easy to get hold of ingredients online or in your, on your shopping trip that you can get. I mean, that's one of the benefits of home tending, is that your cupboards are full of amazing ingredients uh, that you might not actually find at home. Um, so all you need, some great ingredients, some great flavors, a bit of imagination, bosh. Bosh. Perfect, perfect, They're absolutely amazing. I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna top my coconut foam up a little bit more because it's so delicious. And then why don't we have a little uh, electronic cheers as such. Cheers, buddy. Absolute pleasure. Cheers, mate. Thanks for having Good me. Good show, drink with you. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Thanks buddy. For